game on a beautiful Halloween night in Tuscaloosa, where tonight the second-ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama play host to their nearest SEC rivals, the Mississippi State Bulldogs, who've made the 83-mile trip east from Starkville to take on 5-0 Alabama. They're averaging 48 points per game. That's most of the country entering the weekend among teams that have played more than one game this season. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge. Delighted to have you with us. It is certainly a historically excellent start for Alabama on offense. The last week in Tennessee, they lost Jalen Waddell, their explosive playmaker, to a fractured ankle out for the year. To me, there's still enough talent on offense to win a national championship. Well, they're going to miss Waddle, but they have so many good pieces. I mean, it's a, an explosive offense and a really well-balanced offense. Starts with a great offensive line, but then they've got skill guys playing all world right now, led by their redshirt junior quarterback, Mac Jones, and his first year as a starting quarterback. He's completing almost 80% of his passes, 381 yards a game. Running back Najee Harris has 14 touchdowns, running much, much much more physical this year. And then Devontae Smith, their wide receiver, continues to be their leading receiver. I expect to see a little wrinkle with him, maybe some use in the slot to overcome what they're missing with Waddle. When Nick Saban talked this week about the loss of Waddle, he said it's like losing Allen Iverson or Kobe Bryant. He does things nobody else can do. With more on that, down on the field, here's Todd McShay. Yeah, Sean, you're talking about losing the most dynamic player in all of college football in the offense offensive side this guy whether it's run after catch the ability to get vertical and take the top off or in the return game so i know alabama's loaded with these five stars but what you do see is a, a, an offense that really relied on waddle not just in terms of his big plays but also being a decoy and opening things up for the run game and as you see here against Devo with Devonte smith is creating one-on-one -on -one matchups so john mechie had, a, had seven catches for 151 yards last week. He becomes the number two. And then they got a bunch of true freshmen and sophomores that are really going to have to step up as the number three and number four receivers. Meanwhile, it's been a very interesting first season as head coach at Mississippi State for Mike Leach. It's always interesting when Mike Leach is involved. They win their opener at LSU against the defending national champions. K.J. Costello throws for 623 in that game, but they've lost three in a row since, and we don't even know if Costello's going to be the quarterback tonight as we send it down to Molly McGrath. Good evening, Molly. Good evening, Sean. Well, Mike Leach told me that K.J. Costello will continue to be their starting quarterback in this game because he has game experience and moved the ball better in practice. But if their offense is stagnant, they're not going to hesitate to go to their true freshman, Will Rogers, for a spark. The two split reps 50-50 in practice all week. And Leach's message to Costello before the game is make routine plays, saying his quarterback is often over-analytical and tries to do too much. And guys, we're lucky Mike Leach was even allowed onto the field. He was initially denied access by security because he didn't have a credential. I had to convince them that he is, in fact, Mississippi State's head coach, Sean. <laughs> Not trying to sneak in in a Halloween costume. Halloween, Nick Saban's birthday. He's 69 today. His team would like to give him a present for the win over Mississippi State. Kickoff from Tuscaloosa after this. On ESPN, about 19,000 in attendance. About 20% of capacity, socially distanced. Number one defense in the SEC belongs to Mississippi State. They're giving up fewer than 300 yards per game for Mike Leach, his coordinator, Zach Garnett. And Alabama, number one on offense with so many ways to hurt you. Mississippi State won the toss and deferred, so Alabama will have the ball yeah. first. Well, the concerning thing for Mississippi State right out of the gate is going to be defending the run because Texas A&M in their last outing, really committed to the run and took it right at him and ran for 186 yards and Alabama runs the football better than A&M. Brandon Ruiz kicks off for Mississippi State. There's Trey Sanders. And he does not make the 20 stacked up at the 17 yard line. There's Mac Jones, the red shirt junior from Jacksonville, Florida, having a terrific season. Took over as a starter late last year when Tua Tungabello was hurt in a game against Mississippi State. And you see the numbers he is putting up in all 1,905 passing yards in five games, the most through the first five games in a season. 
in Alabama history, including three 400-yard passing games. And he does that again tonight. He tie a single-season SEC record. They start on the ground, and as you said, Alabama testing that Mississippi State run defense as Najee Harris goes for about nine. Well, the thing that I love about Mac Jones this year is he is playing well within himself. And when we talked to Steve Sarkeesian, Nick Saban, that's what they said the biggest challenge for him. Not to try to do too much, don't overanalyze, let go of a bad play, and he has not had many bad plays. Fake toward Harris, dumps it off for the tight end, Miller Forrestall, who bounces ahead with a first down out to the 39-yard line. Tackled by Martin Emerson. A cornerback, it's a 3-3-5 defense for Mississippi State. Najee Harris has to come out of the game, maybe an equipment issue with his helmet. The thing that Alabama has doing a lot of right now is multiple tight ends. They have two tight ends in the game right now. They're both flanked out. They'll probably move them back inside, and that's where they get the power running and then the max protection with play action pass. And Mac Jones tells us he loves play action. He's going deep out of play action, and it's incomplete. And there is a flag down. John Mechie, at least on this play, taking the place of Waddle as the deep threat. Pass interference, defense, number 19. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And he had a step on Colin Duncan, the safety. They play with three safeties, clearly pass interference yeah Duncan knocked the ball away but he grabbed the arm first and again there's that max protection with two tight ends so you have seven guys blocking for the quarterback and you take those deep shots down the field off play action you mentioned Jones so accurate that without Jalen Waddle who had successful surgery on his right ankle during the week and is on the sideline Najee Harris nifty run Another first down to the 33-yard line. Here's tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. Well, for Alabama, I have Devontae yeah. Smith. You might say, well, duh, I mean, he's their leading receiver. But the reason I have him impact is I think we're going to see some different wrinkles with him in the slot. And then Errol Thompson, the leading tackler, has three games of over 10 tackles, and they've got to tackle that big back well tonight in Najee Harris. 13-yard gain for Harris, and now another deep throw by Jones, incomplete, in the direction of Mechie, who had emerged as a very nice number three receiver, along with Smith and Waddle, and now he's number two, and Nick Saban has a lot of faith in Slade Bolden, who yeah. will likely be the primary slot receiver for Alabama. It was funny. I mean, going into last week, he had been targeted one time, and then the very first play of the game after they lost Waddle on the opening kickoff, he caught a pass and then went on to catch six for the day. His first six catches of the season after another fake, the pass incomplete, more flags in the secondary. Looked like Duncan again a little too frisky with Devontae Smith. That's a hard ask now. You're asking a safety, Colin Duncan, to cover in single coverage the primary receiver in this Alabama offense, and Devontae appears. Smith. Defense, number 19. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. It just He's became a lane without Fred Peters, who would be a starter, a senior. That's right. Out with an injury, so Duncan seeing more time than he ordinarily would, and they're going right after him. Yeah, and see, Peters also played corner the year before, so he's a different kind of guy covering from that safety position than Colin Duncan, and uh, Steve Sarkeesian very smart in attacking that new safety. They're swiftly on the move, less than two minutes in. They flip it to Mechie. He's in trouble and runs out of bounds with a loss back near the 30. Uh, Devontae Smith, rather, excuse me, not Mechie. And that's typically the play that you, you would see Jalen Waddle mm -hmm. run because of his explosiveness after the catch and with the ball in his hands. Smith is such a great route runner. He's so impressive in terms of getting separation as just as, as a receiver, but he doesn't have the same explosiveness that Waddle does. Very few people do, right? Tom? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's true. a unique dude now. Oh my goodness. Smith a senior, averaging nine catches per game. Checked down short. This time it is Mechie, and he's upended at the 22-yard line by Emmanuel Forbes, a freshman, true freshman, who's 
seeing more playing time in recent weeks. He's earned it with his play. Really good pressure that time. Forced Mac Jones to get rid of the ball quickly. And then good tackling in space on Mechie. Big third down opportunity right now for this Bulldog defense. Third down nine. They bring pressure, and they do that a lot. To the corner of the end zone, and Smith couldn't hang on. Off his fingertips. And that time, no interference from Colin Duncan. Although if Smith hangs on, Duncan gets beat for a touchdown. Yeah, he beat Duncan. He had separation. You can't throw it any better, and you just don't see Devontae Smith miss many of them like that. When you put a guy in the slot and run the fade, you have so much field to work with. That's a great read by Mac Jones going there because you've got a lot of room to put that ball in the right spot, which he did. But Devontae not able to come down with it. Will Reichard, who hasn't missed a kick yet this season, and that is still the case. 40-yard field goal for the sophomore from Hoover, Alabama. Alabama up 3-0 against Mike Leach and the Bulldogs. Friends, as a reminder, you can watch tonight's game in 4K on DirecTV, Optimum, and Xfinity as part of the Samsung QLED 4K Game of the Week. Here's a view from the AT&T 5G Skycam. Beautiful last night in October here in Tuscaloosa, 65 degrees. And kickoff, near 70 today. Sunny skies. And Reichert's kickoff will be a touchback over the head of Devontae Payton. So, after thinking about it for the last two weeks, because they had a bye week last week, Mike Leach has decided to continue with K.J. Costello as his starting quarterback. We mentioned the debut as he transferred over from Stanford. Set the single-game SEC passing record with 623 yards against LSU in Baton Rouge. But uh, since then, it has been a struggle, to say the least. There's Will Rogers, the freshman backup. The last three games, one touchdown pass and eight interceptions in losses to Arkansas, Kentucky, and Texas A&M. He throws it into traffic and almost threw another interception as the true freshman Brian Branch stepped in front of Jaden Wally, the intended receiver. We're going to see Alabama play a lot more zone defense than we're accustomed to seeing. And when you do that, you have to break quickly on the ball. And that first pass play, Brian Branch did exactly that. Great break on the football to knock it away. Nick Saban said, ordinarily, we are a pattern match team. And I know you'll explain that as we go along. Costello, 25 career starts at Stanford. He pitches it to Jaquavius Marks, a true freshman who's their featured running back now. They're without Kylan Hill, who led the SEC in rushing last year in the regular season with more than 1,300 yards. He started the season with Mississippi State, knowing it would be a pass-happy offense, but depending on what you read or believe, he has either opted out or he hasn't, but he's not here tonight. He didn't play in their last game. There have been reports he was suspended. The school says that's not something they would confirm or deny. They would only say that he's unavailable. High snap handled by Costello. He was hit as he threw. It was almost intercepted again. Branch there. Malachi Moore also back there. And it was the pressure that forced the throw. Yeah, that's Will Anderson, their best pure pass rusher. The throw is out. It's a little bit behind the intended receiver, and that was man coverage with two deep safeties. Therefore, they had tight coverage on that crossing route. Good three and out for the Bama defense. Todd, I'll, just, I'll be honest. I, I'm surprised that K.J. Costello was the starter tonight. I, I really thought that Will Rogers would be after studying the tape. I just, I think he injects more energy in, into this offense. Good punt by Tucker Day, and it's well covered by the Bulldogs. Slade Bolden back there instead of Jalen Waddle. And Martin Emerson down there leading the coverage for Mississippi State. Well, Hill's been one of the best running backs in the SEC in his senior year. You know, part he said early in the year, 
he was excited about playing in this offense yeah. because he wanted to showcase his receiving skills with an eye toward the next level. And he was. Yeah. He caught 15 passes in that victory against LSU. Yeah, he was fitting differently in the offense. I mean, this is a team right now that's not run the ball hardly at all. Here comes Najee Harris, about nine. Should say caught 15 passes against Kentucky. That was the school record time performance. He had 158 yards receiving on eight catches in that opener against LSU. He was their leading receiver. Even he had just played in three of the four games was not available in the Mississippi State lingo last week or two weeks ago in their last game against Texas A&M, nor is he here tonight. Well, you can see the philosophy of Alabama right now. Two tight ends all the way around, Oof. ball out. Jones lost the ball, and Harris scooped it up and advanced it for the first down on third and a foot. I don't think he ever got the snap. The snap was a little bit low. Watch the quarterback center exchange. He never got it. And not able to fall on it. Najee Harris alertly falls on it and gets the first down. But Alabama right now going with two tight ends, running right at this Mississippi State defense. And again, if Mississippi State has to commit safeties and extra bodies to the line of scrimmage, that leaves one-on-one -on -one opportunities outside with the likes of Devontae Smith. Another play action pass, another deep throw. It's incomplete, and here's another flag thrown in the secondary. It was John Mechie this time, running deep. And Martin Emerson had the coverage. Pass interference, defense, number one. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Now I got to see this one again. This ball was way overthrown. It's Martin Emerson in coverage. The ball's clearly over his head. I, you got to let terrible. that go. That, sure that's did. not pass interference. My goodness. I mean, the, the first two they called on Colin Duncan, okay, he grabbed. Correction. That's... There is no foul for pass okay. interference. <laughs> the ball was ruled uncatchable. Well, it shouldn't have been pass interference, period, but it definitely was uncatchable, too. That's Zach Arnett, Second, yeah. the defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, just 34 years old. In his first year with Mike Leach, he spent the last nine years coaching at San Diego State with Rocky Long. He's one of the innovators of this 3-3-5 defense. That's the defense Mike Leach wanted to use. They played well defensively. That's a beating the SEC in total defense. Here's Najee Harris for a short game. And you know, it's not that unorthodox of a defense, Sean. A lot of people in college football play a version of that in nickel situations or in passing situations. They just play with that setup every down, first, second, and third down. But most teams, even Alabama, plays a version of a you know, three-man front with extra defensive backs in passing situations. A lot of slanting up front. Nick Saban said that would be a challenge. A lot of movement, twisting in that offensive line. Jones could well get it off. Good Harris job. tried to break free, but could not. Got forward for perhaps the yard to get back to the line of scrimmage, and then that's it. Well, there's a, a just an unblocked guy coming from the outside. This time, the tight end went out instead of staying in the block. Nobody to account for that edge rusher. That was Brule, number three, who came untouched, and Mac Jones had to get rid of the football. Good pressure from Mississippi State. And there's Charlie Scott to punt. He took over as the starting punter last week at Tennessee after the true freshman Sam Johnson had fared as well as they would like. Stumbling fair catch made by Austin Williams. Back in the studio, here's Matt Berry. Gentlemen, good evening. Time now for your All-State Protection Spotlight. And Sam Ellinger in Texas getting just enough protection to roll out and find Jake Smith for the go-ahead touchdown. They go for two points. This to Kay Brewer. The Longhorns up 34-31 on Oklahoma State late in the fourth quarter. That just seems every week to be involved yeah. in the seat squirmer. So second series for K.J. Costello in the Mississippi State offense. Given time this time, and he dumps it off for Brad Cumbest. Who well, hasn't been much of a factor, but Coach Leach mentioned him when we visited this week. He's a 
dual sport athletes on the baseball team. That play right there by the Alabama defense is what teams after LSU have done to this Mississippi State offense. They've rushed three, they dropped eight, and they forced the quarterback to throw it short and then just come up to make a solid tackle. There's the first catch of the season for Cumbest. An outfielder on the fine Bulldog baseball team. Again, three-man rush. And here's Joquavius Marks. He figures to get much more action again without Kylan Hill, Brian Branch, and Patrick Sertan combined on the stop. Well, he also, that's his 24th catch of the season. Mike Leach always has thrown the football a lot to his running back. Let's see if they come after K.J. Costello with more than three on this third down play like they did the last third down play. Leach serves as his own offensive coordinator with that remarkably small piece of paper as his call sheet. It's folded up. Try to throw a little bubble, and it's... Is it a catch? No, incomplete. Officials conferring. Malik Heath did not take it in. The big key tonight is going to be this three-man pass rush. And Alabama has done such a good job with a four-man rush and what I call a gap control rush, but they're not actually worried about getting to the quarterback. They're trying to affect the quarterback and get their hands up, especially on a lot of those short throws, to either bat the ball down like they did five times against Georgia or just affect the throwing window for the quarterback. Uh, so far, we've seen three-man rush on first and second, and then a four-man rush on third down. Short punt this time by Tucker Day, Slade Bolden, telling his teammates to get away from it. And they almost did not completely heed the advice. Back comes Mac Jones with a 3-0 lead after this. Back in Tuscaloosa, Alabama on Halloween. Now Alabama now on the field with 11 personnel, which means one back, one tight end, and three receivers. So far, every possession they've had 12, which is one back and two tight ends. Going to spread it out a little bit more on this possession. Out of the pistol with Najee Harris, the running back. Slade Bolden runs in motion. Harris looks like he got enough for another first down. He's very close to it. Marcus Murphy, the middle safety, they call him the Bulldog, made the stop for Mississippi State. The difference between Najee Harris this year and any other year in his career, he is just pressing the hole much more consistently and running with more physicality. I mean, he is running north and south. He was always a guy earlier, even though he's a big back, always wanted to try to bounce things out and outrun people to the sideline. He's a different runner now. Saban made note of that in our visit this week. Here he comes again. Took four or five Bulldogs to wrestle him down. There is a flag back at the 45-yard line. Jason Autry, the referee, leading this SEC crew. Holding offense, number 65. 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Deontay Brown. So this, this is drive. what I'm talking about right here, Sean. This was a play last week against Tennessee. It's third and two. He gets hit in the backfield. Now, ordinarily, in this case, he would bounce this outside. But watch Najee Harris lower the shoulder in his head and fight through four defenders to pick up the first down. It's not a flashy run, but that's the difference in this guy this year than earlier in his career. And he's a better all-around back because of it. A streak of 12 straight games with a rushing touchdown. Jones a little bit off target. Devontae Smith couldn't take it in with one hand. That was a bad throw. <laughs> you were being kind, saying a little bit off target. You don't throw outs that far inside and normally get away with it. Mac Jones knows he got away with a bad throw there. Well, it's Halloween. I'm disguised <laughs> as a as a kind nice person. person tonight. <laughs> How about Nick Saban? We mentioned. It's his birthday today, and he said, yeah, my mom was always trying to figure out, still is, if I'm a trick or a treat. So he doesn't celebrate his birthday very much, but it's always during football season. Najee Harris, also an adept receiver at 14 for the year, entering tonight. He got the tie to cross midfield. 
I like that play call by Steve Sarkeesian. Got a good amount of the yardage back. They brought Devontae Smith in motion like they used to do with Waddle and showed screen that way. Came back with the screen the other side to the running back. Plenty of time for Jones on target. Devontae Smith, first down Alabama to the 35-yard line of MSU. Perfect timing on this throw by Mac Jones. Watch him get set. Set his back foot and drive the football on time to Devontae Smith coming out of the break for the first down. Nick Saban talking about Steve Sarkeesian saying he's as good as there is at creating balance between the run yeah. and the pass. We're seeing that again already tonight. Raving about the way Sark uses his personnel using Smith for a touchdown. They're having a very tough time dealing with Devontae Smith. Well, they go play action with max protection and get the one-on-one. -on -one. There's a corner blitz. The safety kind of gets flat-footed. That's a mismatch going against Devontae Smith. Mac Jones read it, but watch. Mac Jones doesn't have to worry about the blitz because they've got the running back and the tight end staying in the block. There's seven blockers. He doesn't have to panic. He waits for the separation and then delivers the football. Will Riker for the extra point. 28th career touchdown reception for Devontae Smith. Only Amari Cooper has caught more for Alabama. He now has just three more than the senior from Louisiana. Spoke with Devontae Smith yesterday, said Jalen Waddle will certainly remain a very important team leader. He's there on the sideline in that cart. Yeah. Being careful not to put him in a place where he can get run over, having just had right ankle surgery earlier in the week. Those two bring so much energy to this whole team, not just the offense, not just the wide receiver room. There's Javante Payton bringing back the uh, Riker kickoff. He ran into his own man. And he went down at the 16-yard line. Jalen Waddle had 557 receiving yards. Bear in mind, he didn't play a play from scrimmage in their fifth game of the year. Three, three returns for touchdown. The SEC Special Teams Player of the Year. But the state at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville was there for the tradition. The winning team of that Great rivalry, Alabama and Tennessee. They smoke cigars. They all went to the receiver group, went to the ambulance yeah. to smoke a cigar with Jalen Waddle. Uh, he's a very, very popular guy on the team. Nick Saban said for the second year in a row, we've lost the most popular guy on our football team to an injury to a tongue by Loa a year ago. Against these Mississippi State Bulldogs in Starkville. Quavius marks the reception. And a short gain. Mississippi State, meanwhile, does not have a first down. They have 13 yards of offense now. now. Again, when they played LSU and threw for 623 yards, LSU played all man to man. They rushed at least four every time, played man, and they got explosive plays down the field. The third possession, they've been two, three and outs. Their longest gain has been four yards. Joquavius Marks wrestled down by D.J. Dale in the middle of that defensive front for Alabama. This is, it, it is definitely going to take time for this offense to, to take root with Mississippi State, but that's been the case with Mike Leach everywhere he's been at Texas Tech and Washington State. It doesn't happen overnight. And then you factor in also this offensive line four games they had four different starting combinations to work with Leach said we haven't protected consistently enough saw Will Rogers the backup quarterback you may see action again Costello almost intercepted and it was batted down by Josh Joe there is a flag down on the far sideline on third down, they have been playing more tight man coverage. But the thing is that Alabama can do as we listen to this penalty call. Ineligible receiver downfield, offense number 31. The penalty is declined, result of the play, fourth down. 
Number 31 is a wide receiver, but obviously by formation he was covered and not an eligible receiver. There he was in the, in the slot. But the problem right now for Mississippi State is Alabama has no fear of the running game at all, which means they can play with two deep safeties and believe they can stop anything they try to do running the football. But two deep safeties makes you better in your pass defense than only having and, one deep safety. And Alabama is just driving this offensive line backwards into the quarterback almost every single pass attempt. Tucker Day punting for the third time in this first quarter. And Slade Bolden makes a fair catch. Good field position for Bama to start this possession. Next Saturday night, 7.30 Eastern time. The Pac-12 season kicks off. Our colleagues will be in Eugene for number 14, Oregon, against Stanford. Great rivalry. 7.30 Eastern time. Davis Mills will be the starting quarterback. Of course, A.J. Costello started 25 games as the starting quarterback for the Cardinal before transferring here. Jones took the check down, and Najee Harris gang tackled after a gain of perhaps a yard. It's one of the things, again, I think Mac Jones is doing so well and why he's completing almost 80% of his passes. That was a play action attempt to throw deep to John Mechie. He saw double coverage on Mechie, didn't force the ball down the field, took the dump ball, taking what the defense gives, and then wait for those opportunities to throw the ball down the field. Swing it out wide here for Devontae Smith. Good rally to the ball by this defense. Colin Duncan in on the play. They stopped him at the 48, so Alabama will need six here on third down. Actually, now they spotted at the 47-yard line. Well, if you're Mississippi State, I think you got to try to create pressure again. And they rush five. Jones behind the defense again, Devontae Smith. Nobody can cover him. They've tried a couple of different defenders to no avail. That time behind London Pratt for an Alabama touchdown. Well, when you pressure, you're going to play man-to-man. -man. Watch Najee Harris. We've talked about him as a runner. We've talked about him as a receiver. Watch him as a pass blocker. Picks up the blitz. Just enough time for Mac Jones to get the ball delivered deep down the field to Devontae Smith. Little out and go. And there's the separation by number six. But it was the pickup of the blitz that allowed Mac Jones to wait that long. I think we're seeing Jalen Waddell isn't the only guy for Alabama who can run some deep routes and get open. Extra point good by Will Reichard. And the Alabama offense continues to cruise right along. Seventh touchdown pass this season that's traveled 30 or more yards in the air. Leading the country for Mac Jones. We talked with Todd McShay all week long about Mac Jones. You know, he really wasn't on the NFL radar when yeah. the season began. He had 12 quarterbacks ranked, and Jones was not one of them. Now, uh, he's a leading Heisman Trophy candidate. Well, it, you know what's interesting? Because when we got ready to do the first game against Missouri, I went back and watched the two games he started last year against Auburn and the Iron Bowl, and then Michigan, two good defensive football teams. And I saw so many good things, not just in how he threw the ball and moved, but I saw mental toughness. He threw two pick sixes in that Iron Bowl at Auburn and yet battled back and kept grinding and had his team in a position to win. And I just think that he was way better as a quarterback than anybody really knew, maybe other than Steve Sarkeesian, before this season started. Well, Javante Payton, who stopped after 20. Todd McShay, kind of reminiscent of Joe Burrow, who at the beginning of last year really wasn't on many people's radar as an NFL prospect. Yeah, Burrow was a fifth round, a fifth round pick in my opinion coming into last year, and he winds up going number one overall. So you, you see the development, and and I agree, Mac Jones has had a huge year, and and what Todd said specifically is the presence in the pocket, the feel, the ability to get the ball out. And, and he's not a runner, but he moves and he extends plays, too. 
Yeah, he has little subtle movement because he knows where pressure, he knows where his problems are, and he moves very comfortably in the pocket to buy himself time. He feels it smoothly, smoothly a lot like Burrow did. Yep. A.J. Costello dumps it down to Dylan Johnson, who's come in at running back now. And a tackle made by Jordan Battle. He's had a nice sophomore season at safety for Alabama. You just get the feeling that K.J. Costello has to try to throw something deeper down the field to at least send a message to this Alabama defense that we can throw the ball vertically. Because right now, Alabama is just squatting on all the short stuff, and they're not afraid of anything going over their heads. Cyrus Mitchell, number five, is when the man has given them some big plays this season. Now they do throw deep, and that's nowhere near Javante Payton. That, that was a mix-up on between quarterback and receiver because KJ was throwing that to the outside like a flag route and Peyton was running it inside like a post route. KJ Costello and Mike Leach obviously very familiar with each other. They played against each other in the Pac-12 when KJ was the starting quarterback at Stanford and Mike Leach was the head coach at Washington State. Mike Leach said it wasn't much of a recruiting process. He said to KJ, you want to lead the nation in passing? <laughs> he said, yeah, that would be nice. Got up to a start like that might happen, but boy, has this passing game gone south since week one. And that pass incomplete. Tended for Osiris Mitchell. Now, even if Osiris Mitchell catches this ball, there are two defenders there to stop it short, well short of the first down. And Alabama is really tuned into these short crossing routes. And not really giving him any space to throw the football right now. I should say Mike Leach has history on his side. His teams have led the nation in passing 10 times. Yeah. It is 18 years as a head coach, 10 at Texas Tech and eight at Washington State. But as you said earlier, it took him a while to yep. get to that point in those two stops. Fourth straight, three and out. To start the game for Mississippi State on offense. There is a flag down as Tucker Day's punt returned across midfield by Slay Bolden. Illegal formation, kicking team. Number 31 was not on the line of scrimmage with more than four in the backfield. Five-yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down, Alabama. You know, Mac Jones, the thing that stands out in addition to what Todd and I were talking about with the, the pocket presence is his ability to make quick decisions. He sees here it's a capital, it's a quarterback coming off the edge. Now he's got a one-on-one -on -one versus a safety, and he's so decisive, and then the, obviously the ball placement is perfect over the right-hand shoulder. He really has a good feel, and for a guy who hasn't started a lot of games, he reads and processes so quickly, and I think that's why he's, A, skyrocketing up draft boards, but B, he's, he's leading this Alabama team to probably heights that they didn't expect to have offensively. And getting greedy, Devontae Smith. Is he in bounds? Yes, he is inside the 10-yard line with Colin Duncan again in coverage. He is on his way to one of those epic nights that he's had in his past. I mean, big games against LSU last year. What do you have against Ole Miss in the game we did earlier? 11 or 12 catches. 13. 13. I mean, he's off to that kind of night. John Mechie banged around. Well, you guys mentioned Colin Duncan. Coaches spent extra time talking to him on the sidelines. He's the inexperienced safety coming in for Fred Peters. And Mississippi State secondary, very, very frustrated. Coaches telling them, you need to be mentally tough. And no answer for Smith. Brian Robinson trying to run it in on second and goal from the one. Again, this is all set up be, uh, because of their ability to run the football. Right now, Alabama only 45 yards rushing, but it sets up everything they want to do, throwing the football down the field. Well, they and have 170 yards passing, yeah. and Smith in the quarter, six catches for 130 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> First quarter. 
interfered with him a couple of times as well. Robinson again, touchdown. And there is a flag. Thrown by the official on the line of scrimmage near side. False start, offense, number 87. Five-yard penalty, third down. Miller Forrestall, fifth-year senior tight end from Cartersville, Georgia, where he wanted to be a quarterback, but they had a quarterback by the name of Trevor Lawrence on yeah. the high school team. So That's the end he of became the a tight quarter. end. And it's worked out well for both. First quarter dominated by Alabama. They outgained Mississippi State 217 to 21. Ten first downs to zero. And the most important numbers, 17-0 Alabama after one. Mac Jones has completed his last eight passes. Bama with third down and goal from the sixth on the opening play of the second quarter, already leading 17 to nothing. They tried to bring pressure. Jones throws to the goal line, incomplete. Trying to get it to Miller Forrestall. You know, I think he had Slade Bolden right now. If he throws to Bolden right now, I think Bolden gets to the front pylon for a touchdown. Well, he, he throws it right now. It's not going to count because the play's been over for several seconds. I, wh what's your costume? I thought you were the kind guy. Why? Nice if he guy throws it right there, right now, I think Bolden gets into the end zone. He waited and tried to get to it to his tight end, Forrestall, and the ball was thrown low, and they have to settle for the field goal attempt. You know this. What's that? You know this. <laughs> Will Reichert. How about Will Reichert? Two for two tonight, eight for eight for the season. It's been a weakness in recent years. It's been field goal kicking, but not this season. Once again, here's Matt Berry. All right, gentlemen, a couple of updates for you. Alex Hale, Oklahoma State, 34-yarder to send it to overtime. No college kicker situation here. First overtime, Texas and Oklahoma State. Also, Ohio State, Penn State. They have kicked. Master T, up the gut. Buckeyes score first, 7-0. Very interesting weekend of college football. Number two, Alabama in cruise control here against Mississippi State. And their most played rivalry. This is the 115 yeah. between the two. The most commonly played opponent for Alabama. How about Boston College taking Clemson to the ropes? Yeah, that was a... Very exciting game. Clemson rallied from 28-10 down. The largest home comeback win ever. Rapidly improving BC team. Fair catch on the kickoff by Javante Payton. And here's our drive recap brought to you by Downey to five. Well, Todd McShay showed you a play from the Georgia game. This was the exact same play, a corner blitz, but Mac Jones knows it's picked up by protection. So he waits for his top receiver, Devontae Smith, to open up. Then the out and up. Again, Max protection. Nice pickup by Najee Harris. Steve Sarkeesian has done a great job of allowing Mac Jones to throw deep down the field with Max protection. And he has really paid off throwing the football deep. Can they get a first down? That's the first step for this Mississippi State offense. Three-man rush, and they still take down K.J. Costello. Phil Mathis plays both the nose and defensive end with the sack, his first of the season. And that's a rarity for this Alabama defense. Coming in, only seven sacks on the season. This is their eighth on the three-man rush, but you've got eight defenders. They're closing off all the zone areas, and Costello nowhere to go with the football. Pete Goldie and Nick Saban said they'd like more sacks, but as Todd McShay said earlier, they talk about impacting the quarterback, and they impact him again. Right. There's an example of it. 
batting down a pass, getting hands in the passing lanes, disguising coverage and confusing the quarterback. That's all a part of impacting him. It's just gap control pass rushing. You, know, you, you got to get your eyes up and then you got to get your hands up. And they said it was going to be so important coming into this game to be able to affect the B gap, meaning those inside gaps on throws to take away a lot of the short throws that Mississippi State likes to run in this air raid offense. Really good technique. I mean, not only keeping your eyes up, but keeping a hand free in order to do that. Third down and 14. Costello. Running for his life, and he staggers to the 25-yard line, run down by he took Dylan a bad Moses. Shot too. He took a really bad shot. Remember, K.J. Costello had some concussion head issues during his time at Stanford, and he took a serious shot at the end of that run. Yeah, he is clearly in distress. We watched him at Stanford. He's a game competitor. I would think that we will not see him again here tonight. Let's hope he's okay. Will Rogers warming up. Out. Medical staff out to look at KJ Costello, who has a history of concussions. He suffered a concussion in their opener last year for Stanford against Northwestern and missed time. This looked like the knee to the head. Christian Harris inadvertent just coming to help on the tackle and they took their time with KJ Costello and now they're going directly to the locker room. Yeah, this is a moment ago they're helping him up and he is just now walking to the tunnel. He was seated on the field the entire time that we were away in commercial. That's a live shot just now getting to the tunnel. It's the fifth straight three and out to start the game. We'll see Will Rogers true freshman quarterback the next time they're on offense. Tucker Day to punt again for the fifth time. Might be a little leg weary short line drive kick. Slade Bolden. Slade Bolden doing his Jalen Waddle imitation. Runs it back inside the 35 yard line to the 33. There is a flag down on the play. Bolden was a high school quarterback at West Monroe High School in Louisiana. Very good short space quickness. Here's the return. Holding. Return team. Number 21. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Alabama. Here's Matt Barry back in the studio. All right, guys. Overtime, Texas, Oklahoma State. Sam Ellinger, first possession to Joshua Moore. Touchdown, Longhorns. Pokes have the ball, fourth and eight, ball game on the line. Ohio State, Penn State, quick work here. Justin Fields, Chris Olave, it is all Buckeyes early. 14-nothing over Penn State. Yeah, I knew that was a tough spot for Penn State. They did not play well enough to win in Bloomington last week, and Ohio State clearly the cream of the crop again in that conference. Penalty means they start at the 35. Najee Harris, after a gain of eight, taken down by Sean Preston, sophomore safety. St. James, Louisiana, grew up around football. His dad was a high school football coach. Sean was a ball boy for his dad when he was a kid. Now this Alabama offense on on pace for another epic kind of night. You know, this we saw him a couple weeks ago, 723 yards against Ole Miss, then 546 against Georgia. Everybody thought Georgia is the best defense in the country. Ooh. Najee Harris stood up and driven back by Aaron Odom. Backup player, although they rotate a lot of bodies in in that front three. Odom's a junior from Jackson, Mississippi. Nice play. One of the things that this Mississippi State defense has done prior to tonight is in sudden change situations when they've had to come on the field after turnovers and there's been a lot they have played some of their best defense right now they're hanging on for their lives Mac Jones checks it down short to Devontae Smith and he's stacked up at the 50 but he got the first down 
on his seventh catch of the game for 138 yards, and he has scored twice. Just see the, how smart of a player he is on that play. If he continues to try to take that to the sideline, he may not get the first down. But he knew he had to turn up field. He was a little bit short, got what he needed, and a couple extra. Steve Sarkeesian told us the other day, he says, I don't think I've ever had a player that I've had more communication with that wasn't a quarterback mm -hmm. than Devontae Smith. He's a real student of the game and a fun guy to coach. Yeah, he likes to be involved. Flag before the snap. False start. Offense, number 65. Five-yard penalty. First down. In fact, Sark told a funny story. He said, well, sometimes between series, when the defense is on the field, he'll be talking to Silent. He'll talk about a play he wants to run in the next offensive series. And he said, Waddle and Smith would say, well, I'll take that play. You know, that's, <laughs> that's my right. play. <laughs> Every now and then, they'll go to rock, paper, scissors to try to figure <laughs> out who would be the primary receiver. Najee Harris. Running left, gets the penalty yardage back and about three more. It's been one of my favorite things to, to watch on the sideline the last couple of years. Obviously, they lost Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs to the first round of the NFL draft. But the competitiveness that they have on the sideline, they're always chirping at one another. They set such a high standard. And, and talking to Sarkeesian, he was just saying, that, you know, that his quote was, they're on their necks. Like, you have to perform. And if you don't want it, then I'm going to get it. When they've got three freshmen that they need to kind of bring along here as the season goes without Waddle now. And I think the, the thing is, is right now those young guys maybe aren't trusted enough to do things consistently and all the precision in this passing game. But as Todd just mentioned, these wide receivers will hold them to a standard and make sure that they play and prepare the way that's expected. That's Javon Baker, number five. He's the guy we kind of anticipate will be the next young guy in to add to this wide receiver rotation. True freshman, got his first game action Tennessee last week, didn't have a touch. Mac Jones with a flag down to the end of the play. Interesting play call. I don't know if I hit 20 to nothing, I'd want my quarterback to get exposed like that. Manuel Forbes and Tyrus Wheat made the tackle. I think there's gonna be an illegal block in the back by Devontae Smith also. That was good defense on third down by Mississippi State. There is no foul for an illegal block in the back. Fourth down. It's Devontae Smith trying to block. He is the guy I thought they were going to call the penalty on. And at the end of this play, he got knocked around in there pretty good as well. Kicked in the head by his quarterback, Mac Jones. Looks like Coach Saban's going to go for it on fourth down and one. Why not? They clock down under 10, so Mac Jones has to be aware of that. You'd think Najee Harris here. They clock at 2, 1. And it is Harris. Did he get enough? I think he did. All he had to do was get past the 40-yard line, right? Get the football past the 40. I never say it depends on the spot because it always depends on the spot. First down. Right now, a perfect opportunity after that fourth down conversion well, for another the line the throw down the field. Right okay, so we head to the replay booth. Nikki Haddock is the replay official. 20 to nothing, Alabama. We're in the second quarter in Tuscaloosa. After video review, first down Mississippi State. The runner would short the line to gain. Well, there you see his head on the line. I mean, I guess they thought when his head went down and the ball had not crossed the plane. Good stop by Mississippi State. Let's bring in our rules expert, longtime on the field referee, Matt Austin. Good evening, Matt. What'd you think? Good evening, Sean. Thanks. I, I agree. When Najee Harris came into the line, his ball, hit, his head hit right on the line. So if the ball had to get past the line, there's no way that. It... <laughs> That's correct. There's Joe Quavius Marks. 
Bounced out of bounds by Daniel Wright. And Will Rogers in the game. Immediately, they pick up their first first down of the night. And on the run, there's Rogers, the true freshman who has seen playing time. Came what? in for a lot of action in their last game two weeks ago against Texas A&M. Performed very well with 15 out of 18 passing. He Except gave a single score. season, yeah. a single game completion percentage mark. Son of a coach, smart kid, knows the offense. On the wrong page there with Javante Payton. Back to the studio we go. Here's Matt. Sean, it's gone final overtime. Oklahoma State, Texas, fourth and eight. Spencer Sanders can't avoid the pressure. Texas, their first road win against a top 10 team since 2010. And now there are no remaining undefeated teams in the Big 12. That is wide open as we go forward. Oklahoma State, a tough one next week. They're at K-State. Texas home for West Virginia. Nice tackle in the open field by Dylan Moses. Coach Saban saying he's looking for more for Moses. It's not just about getting everybody lined up, and he's done a great job of that as he returned to action this year after missing last year with the injury, but he needs to cut it loose and worry about his own play. Well, that was an outstanding play because really coming into this game, the top two teams in the SEC in terms of yards after the catch were Alabama and Mississippi State, and so far tonight, Mississippi State, when they do catch the ball, nowhere to run after the catch. Third down and 10. And not in field goal range here. Look out from behind. Rodgers taken down by Chris Allen. Well, again, third down. They've gone to more four rush, guys. Here's Chris Allen. He's a linebacker, but he's rushing as an edge rusher. Gets around the best offensive lineman, Charles Cross, the left tackle, and then chases the quarterback down. So. Pretty consistent first and second down. We're going to rush three, see if we can get our hands up, disrupt the quarterback. And on third down, we're going to come after him with a fourth rusher. And that time, Chris Allen got the sack. The second sack of the ball game for this Alabama defense that only had seven coming into the game. And Tucker Day replaced as the punter here by Reed Bowman. Day might be wiped out from all the activity. He's seen already. Slade Bolden, the punt return to the 13-yard line. 38-yard punt by Bowman. Two semifinals. New Year's Day. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. They're enjoying this Halloween in Tuscaloosa. All Alabama, second-ranked team in the country, leading 20 to nothing. And they start first and 10 from their own 12. Trey Sanders getting the carry. And around right end to the 18-yard line for a gain of six for the redshirt freshman. Highly touted prospect coming out of IMG Academy in Florida. Sanders missed last year with a foot injury. They give it to him again. More involved the last couple of weeks had seven carries in their easy win in Knoxville last week. One of the things that COVID impacted usually it's the third Saturday in October That's when right. Alabama and Tennessee renewed that great rivalry. But they had to play it on the fourth Saturday. Najee Harris getting a rest. You know we talk about the skill guys. We talk about Mac Jones, Devontae. Smith off to a huge game, but it's those big guys up front that I think make the whole thing go for Alabama. 97 combined career starts for that veteran offensive line. Jones threw it up for grabs. And Devontae Smith did well to bat it away from Emmanuel Forbes. Emmanuel Forbes has kind of been the hot hand for this Mississippi State defense. He's a true freshman, but he's in perfect position. Now we've seen Devontae Smith work over the safety Colin Duncan. That time he was on a corner. And really excellent coverage by Emmanuel Forbes. There's two interceptions, one of just four true freshmen in the country with four interceptions on the season. 
Short set by Jones and the quick pop to Slade Bolden. Oh. Offensive line coach is Kyle Flood. This is his second year. He's a former head coach at Rutgers. They've had some really good offensive line coaches here, and Kyle Flood's doing a great job. You look up front. First of all, the guys have stayed healthy. It's the same starting five. You got three guys, the center and the left guard, left tackle, will all be in the NFL next year. It's an excellent group. Jones given time again on the slant to Devontae Smith for a first down. And he spoke to Steve Sarkeesian yesterday. He said the leader, he thinks, of the offense, the bell cow of our offense, he said, is our center, yeah. Landon Dickerson. Grad transfer from Florida State. He graduated in Tallahassee in three years. And Todd, you have number two in your rankings among centers. I do, and I, the whole key with him is staying healthy because when he's healthy, he is big, he's long, he's physical, and he really does set the tone. Man, he's playing only 12 games in three years in Tallahassee due to injury. Jones, diving catch made by Slade Bolden at midfield. For another Bama first down. Outstanding student as well. He graduated with honors 3.68 GPA in management from Florida State. There's the injury history. But he's remained healthy here at Alabama starting his 19th game for the Tide over two years. Center's always smart, right? Very smart. <laughs> yep. Very smart. Also has played guard too. Yep. I mean he's you know he's a versatile guy. I just he's just so big and powerful. Trouble on the exchange there with Jones. Jones frustrated, slowed down the progression of that play. Trey Sanders tripped up by Sean Preston. The other thing that Alabama does is, again, they roll in a bunch of tight ends. The Miller Forrestall is kind of their versatile guy who's a receiver and a blocker. They play a lot now with a guy who's wearing number 85. He's Kendall Randolph. He's also an offensive lineman. So sometimes he wears number 60 and a lot of times he wears 85, but he is strictly a blocker. But they play three or four different tight ends and roll them through this offense. Right now, Leo Billingsley, number 19, is the tight end of the ballgame. Illinois, their first football player from Illinois since the late 90s. How about that effort? Trey Sanders with the offensive line pushing, and he kept driving to pick up a Crimson Tide first down. Billingsley comes in. He's uh, going to cut off the back side, and then you see the push by the right side of this offensive line. And again, uh, they are a physical, strong, kind of nasty group up there. And they set the tone for this whole offense. One new starter is the right guard, Emil Echior. Najee Harris back in. And he almost busted it. Got 12 and a first down. Evan Neal, the right tackle, leading the way. Alex Leatherwood, the veteran left tackle, making his 34th career start. He was all conference last year. Now, right now, this Mississippi State defense, this is the 43rd play that they've had to play in the ballgame so far. Their offense only holding it for 19 plays. That's tough against a physical group like this Alabama offense. Jones dodged some trouble. Now he takes off running and slides down. Th this is the movement that Todd McShay and I were talking about. Is, is it subtle? Now watch as Mac Jones comes back. This is going to be good pressure. He steps up, he steps over, and then he makes the right decision to run. Just outstanding feel and movement in the pocket by Mac Jones. Here's Harris. Just shy of the 10-yard line. They'd like to extend his streak. We mentioned earlier, 12 straight games with a rushing touchdown. Second longest such streak in Alabama history. Derrick Henry scored a rushing touchdown in 20 straight games. That is a record that might not ever be broken. Wasn't it 27 in one season that he set the school record? Right? Unbelievable. What an impressive drive by this this offense, especially the offensive line. 11 yeah. plays and just taking time off the clock. Not bothered by the movement of that front. There's a strike, a strike to Smith for a touchdown, his third of the night. 
What an incredible route by Devontae Smith. It's a little combination with the tight end on the same side, but watch the route. Watch the fake outside, then he comes back in, gets the separation, and perfect timing on the throw by Mac Jones. But this is a precise route runner in Devontae Smith. He has the speed to go deep, but he runs such precise routes. Elegantly, that, that was too. I mean, that was he does it with ease. An extra point good by Riker. So with three touchdown receptions tonight, he's now just one behind Amari Cooper for most in Alabama history. That's number 30 for the senior. All right, man, we look forward to that here. It's all Alabama's. Will Riker kicks off again with a 27 to nothing lead over Mississippi State. Javante Payton taken down to the 22. Well, Devontae Smith is on his way to a incredible night. Remember this earlier in the drive. Beautiful play by the freshman, Emmanuel Forbes. Almost comes away with the interception. Devontae Smith says, okay, young fella, you won that one, but take a look at this. Shakes at the goal line, and for Devontae Smith, now nine catches, 159 yards, and three touchdowns. Welcome to the SEC, Emmanuel Forbes. Nine catches is what he was averaging per game coming in. That's a big number per game. He's done it in a half here tonight. Will Rogers, the quarterback for his second series. KJ Costello knocked out with an apparent concussion. Will Anderson put the pressure on his fellow true freshman. And Rogers threw it away. Well, a flat performance for Mississippi State. And they're heading toward their fourth straight loss, barring a miraculous turnaround in this one. And it's been, to some Bulldog fans, an anxious time because yeah. they've had a number of players leave the program in the two weeks since their last game against Texas A&M. Three-man rush. Check down to Dylan Johnson. And he's wrestled down at the 20-yard line. Malachi Moore leading the way. And uh, some of them are understandable. Garrett Schrader was uh, starting quarterback for part of their season last year. He wants to play quarterback. Jalen Maiden was a three-year backup. Most of these players are backups. But still, that's uh, eight players who've left since your last game. And nobody more important than Kylan Hill, who we think is opting out, although that's still a mystery. He has not definitively said anywhere that we've heard or read, but he's definitely not coming back. And apparently, according to Mike Leach, he has not had a conversation with his head coach. Either. That was surprising, so, too. To hear Mike Leach say, well, I haven't talked to him. I heard from people in the building that he wanted to start preparing for the NFL. Dylan Johnson catches a shovel pass. Christian Barmore made the tackle, and here's another fourth down. Still one. Timeout. First down for Mississippi State. And we haven't heard much from Kylan Hill. He did tweet out earlier in the week when people can't get to you or find out nothing about you, they tend to get upset and spread lies. Now, we don't know at all right. if, uh, what he's referring to there. Uh, you know, Mike Leach said, hey, malcontents, if you don't want to be here, and he did, not we're not saying that those guys on right. that list are malcontents or that Hill was, but that he has a history of if you don't want to play hard, practice hard, or if you don't think you're going to play, some of these guys right. decide to leave because they just knew they weren't going to play. And that happens everywhere with new coaches. The difference this year with COVID is there was no spring football. There was a, an abbreviated camp. A lot of times, guys that make the decision to leave or you weed guys out, that happens earlier. It's happening during the season right now because of the unusual circumstances. And, you know, the transfer portal has changed everything. Guys can make quicker decisions or later decisions to leave a program. That never used to really be the case, but it is now. Reed Bowman punts for the second time after Tucker Day averaged about 38 yards per punt on five punts. Here are a couple of uh, quotes over the last few weeks from Coach Leach. Any malcontents, we're going to have to purge a couple of those. And then this week, when that long list that you saw, kept getting longer those who had left if you're stunned or nervous you better brace yourself we might lose more I think the interesting thing for us to see tonight Sean is when this team comes out of the locker room to start the second half and plays the second half 
regardless of what the scoreboard says, how does this team act? How hard do they play? How do they act to each other on the sidelines? Because that will go a long way in telling us how much buy-in there is. And it's Errol Thompson who made the tackle. He's a team leader. And we spoke with him yesterday. We asked him, you know, the perception from afar might be that there's some chaos, turmoil in the program. He said, that's not true. The guys who left went to a better spot for them. He said, those of us who are here are really buying in. We really like and respect Coach Leach, and we're going to keep playing hard. It was a one-sided half against them for sure. 27-0 Alabama. The State Farm Halftime Report right now. On ESPN, the only remaining undefeated team in the SEC, Alabama, seemingly on its way to 6-0 for the year here in Tuscaloosa, dominating Mississippi State 27-0 as we head for the third quarter. Sean McDonough along with Todd Blacklett. So much attention on the Alabama offense all season long. I think you were talking about at the half just a moment ago, the good news for these Tide fans, perhaps the better news, the improvement of the defense. Well, you know, the last time we saw them was in Oxford against Ole Miss, and they gave up a whole bunch of yards and points, running and passing. And Nick Saban said, I think we've been playing better defense the last couple weeks. It showed up against Georgia. It showed up against Tennessee. Tonight, it's been a dominating defensive you know, effort. They've held Mississippi State to 38 total yards, 0 for 7 on third down. One first down in the game for old uh, for Mississippi State. Here's Javante Payton bringing the kickoff back, and he's out near the 25-yard line. Here's the Corona premier moment of the game. Well, we talked about Nick Saban and Pete Golding. We're going to go to a lot more three-man rush with eight drop, and they've been able to create pressure that way. I mean, when you have eight guys in coverage, it really closes up throwing lanes, and they've still been able to get to the quarterback and make whether it was K.J. Costello or Will Rogers uncomfortable. And you can do that by sacking him or also knocking passes down. And uh, it really an outstanding effort by the front, the defensive front After of Alabama play, in that first half. like conduct, return team, number zero. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. That is his first unsportsmanlike foul for the game. First down. Javante Payton, who was the return man. There's another one of those. He'll be disqualified. It's always the last guy, right? I mean, you know, there was a late push on him on the sideline, but it's always the second guy that gets caught. It's just, you know, that's kind of the way it is. Marco Hellams, the Alabama player involved in that. I think the question right now, too, for Mississippi State offensively is, is there a wide receiver? that can step up and at least give them some hope going forward that, that hey, this pass game can turn around. Well, the two leading receivers for the year have been the backs, Kylan Hill, who's mentioned several times, is not here, and this man, Jaquavius Marks. Tough run by Marks. We've got about five. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, I talked to Mike Leach. He told me his offense needs to compete harder. He doesn't like their level of effort in the first half. And he said, we're a step late on everything. Our wide receivers are indecisive. And his message to Will Rogers, his quarterback, is get your eyes in the right place and make a play. And Leach wouldn't tell me the status of his injured starting quarterback, K.J. Costello. But Costello is not out here, and his family is waiting by their locker room. And I think K.J.'s eyes told us the status mm -hmm. of K.J. Costello. History of head injuries, and it certainly looked like another one here tonight. On second and five, there's Aquavius Marks. Nice run, first down. He's a true freshman from Atlanta, out of Carver High School. And there's a look at the first half. If you're a Bulldog fan, you might want to turn away from the television. Seven possessions, seven punts, six three and outs. And Tucker. only 22 offensive plays run to 46 for Alabama. First downs are 18 to 1. Marks in trouble and tripped up by Will Anderson for a loss back to the 24. And the first half stats brought to you by PlayStation 5. Now, all Alabama. I mean, there's just no two ways to look at it. 337 yards of offense in that first half. 18 first downs and you see the difference on third down just a an overwhelmingly dominant effort by the crimson Tide. at some point you've got to take some shots down the field yeah, yeah i think you do find a seam somewhere well, those were first half stats plus because they automatically updated for that 
second first down of the game. They have one in the first half. One on this drive, Javante Payton the catch. He's to the 32, they need to get close to the 39 to extend this possession. Now what Alabama has been doing pretty consistently is rushing four on third downs and they put their two best pass rushers, Will Anderson and Chris Allen, 31 and four. Here's Allen, here's Will Anderson. Those are their two best pass rushers. They rush three on first and second down and they rush four on third down. Sent Dylan Johnson in motion. He was under pressure as he threw, and as a result, it came up a little bit short of Austin Williams. Coach Leach says has been the steadiest of their wide receivers, but nobody making any plays at the wide receiver position tonight. You know, again, he had to get rid of that quick because of the pressure from Will Anderson. I mean, he is so quick off the ball, his first step, and he was in the backfield right away. Slay Bolden back for another punt. It's still Reed Bowman who took over after Tucker Day. Handled the first five punts. This is the third for Bowman. Senior from Magnolia, Texas. Transfer from Texas Tech. How often would we ever say that two punters would both need showers at the end of a game? Devontae Smith has really, to me, been the, the offensive story for Alabama. His ability to know what the defense is doing and create mismatches with, which, with his route running is really special. You, you watch him there. I mean, you got a safety, I'm going to take you deep. Look how smooth he is as a route runner again. And Sarkeesian, Steve Sarkeesian is doing a great job of getting him in the slot and moving him around. And this is a first-round draft pick who is playing up to that level tonight. He's been, he's been fun to watch. And this is his sidekick, John Mechie. He's going to get a flag him. down. Yeah, they're going to get Devontae for a penalty on this one. They'll take him out of the game. Holding <laughs> offense, number six. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. That's one of those penalties where you're upset maybe for the technique. You see the hands grabbing the jersey. But the effort, as Todd McShay just said, this is a first-round draft pick who's out there busting his tail trying to block on a pass to a different receiver. I mean, that's unselfish team play. Unfortunately, he got the penalty. There's nine catches for 159 and three touchdowns. In a half. Most catches he's ever had in the game, 13. Todd mentioned it earlier. That was at Ole Miss earlier this season. Najee Harris weaves out to the 37-yard line. Harold Thompson made the tackle. Terrific linebacker for Mississippi State, who grew up here in Alabama, in Florence, Alabama, as an Auburn fan. He said all of his family members were Auburn fans. He was recruited by Alabama, offered, but wanted to do something different, leave the state. Laid bold in the catch, chased out by Emmanuel Forbes, short of the line to make. We talked about the the big three, minus Jalen Waddle tonight, Mac Jones, Najee Harris, Devontae Smith, all three having outstanding football games to this point. A late substitution there by Alabama. Miller Forstall, not sure he was supposed to be in. And he's now down the bottom of the screen as a tight end. Because they substitute, the officials stepped in to allow the Bulldogs a chance to substitute on defense. They bring forward Mac Jones. And he is tripped up from behind. He didn't feel Kobe Jones closing in quickly. And a sack for the senior. They call him the mayor. He's from Starkville, Mississippi. Well, you mentioned Errol Thompson. Watch him run right through Najee Harris back into the lap of the quarterback. And that made the play take too long. And Kobe was able to get him from the backside, Kobe Jones. But it was the pressure up the middle by Errol Thompson that forced Mac Jones to leave the pocket. But that play was kind of messed up from the beginning because of their formation and personnel group. Charlie Scott. Transfer from Air Force. He was their punter the last three years. He's the younger brother of the former Alabama All-American punter, J.K. Scott, now with the Packers. That punt for 35 yards.
Here's a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by PlayStation 5, Alabama number two in command here. We'll come back to this in a moment. Mississippi State's ready to go. On first and ten, Will Rogers is passed, juggled, caught. Well, Cyrus Mitchell, just the third catch by a wide receiver for Mississippi State. Back we go. My question would be to you, Alabama's number one at least once in every season since 2008. They haven't been number one yet this year. But this impressive, report, uh, impressive performance, Clemson struggling today. Would you flip flop? The top yeah, two? I think they will flip flop. You know, if this game continues to go and Alabama continues to dominate, and because Clemson today, everybody knows, yeah, they didn't have Trevor Lawrence, but it was their defense. It was their defense that kind of let them down today. And I know they were missing some guys with injury, but that game was close because the Clemson defense did not play up to their normal standard. And I think Alabama. You know, obviously the rankings don't matter as much till the college football playoff rankings come out, but uh, I do think Alabama will jump them tomorrow, uh, you know, on Monday. Ohio State likely to be in the conversation as well. And they were without three starters on defense, and they really struggled on that side of the ball. Did Clemson in the first half? BC raced out to a 28 to 10 lead, but they didn't score. Yeah. The Eagles in the second half. Biggest absence, James Skalski. The Middle linebacker, really a tone setter for that defense. Rodgers, nice throw for about a nine yard game. Jaden Wally. Of course, they play today without Trevor Lawrence. But a true freshman, DJ Uangalole, the most rehearsed name by broadcasters right. around the country the last couple of days. He was excellent. He was. He was. Yeah, it was wasn't 42 and two touchdowns so on 30 talented. out of 41. Yep. On third and one, it's Will Anderson blowing up the play. Dump Joquavius Marks for a loss. Back to the 50-yard line. Second time we've seen him do this. Watch him on the hard inside move and the quickness of his first step. I mean, he is right inside the tackle before the tackle knows what hit him. And Anderson's a player that they, they've expected a lot from, and he hasn't quite played up to the level, but he's a true freshman, and he's, he's getting better every week. Yeah, he's pretty mature for a freshman. They love his explosiveness, his first step, and uh, the better he learns technique and counter moves and those kind of things, the better he's going to become. There's Reed Bowman's fourth punt, the ninth for Mississippi State. Another fair catch by Slade Bowling. 27 0 Alabama. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. You know it's up. Better check the score numbers going up. Oh, yeah. Another good night for Mac Jones. Richard, junior quarterback for Alabama. 19 to 25 for 222. Continuing to invite comparisons to Heisman Trophy winner Joe Burrow from last year. Yeah, I like some of the things. I'm seeing some of the same things of Joe Burrow using his eyes, holding safeties, finding matchups, and going for one-on-one. -on -one. This is earlier Mac Jones in the season against a &M. Same thing. Reads the safety, knows he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup, pushing the ball downfield. What I've seen from both these quarterbacks, obviously Joe Burrow all last year and doing it now still with the Cincinnati Bengals is reading and recognizing and seeing his matchups. Najee Harris did well to get back across the line of scrimmage for a gain of two. Now this was Joe Burrow for a full season last year and obviously only our first five SEC games, I'm sorry, Joe Burrow and Mac Jones. Look at those numbers, very, very similar, high completion percentage, and they're not dink and dunk offenses. They're both pushing the football down the field for big plays. I was just going to say, they're willing to hang in the pocket and throw the ball vertically. Yeah. Ball start, offense, number 70, five-yard penalty, second down. It helps to have these receivers. There's no, no question about it. But Absolutely. But you know, he, his touch throwing the ball down the field really stands out. Started four games last year, including the final three, after Tua Tungavaloa was injured. And their win in Starkville against Mississippi State. And three and one is the starter. The only loss at Auburn, and Jones throws an interception. 
Wow. Diving interception by Colin Duncan. And great field position for Mississippi State to take over. Inside the 30-yard line, the officials conferring to make sure they thought it was an interception, at least for the moment, it will stand as such. Well, he's trying to get the ball to Devontae Smith. On a deep crossing route, the ball a little bit far. Well, not sure that was going to stand. Field, Looked like it bounced off the ground. Yep. Third down. Well, that was the ruling on the field, and that's the right ruling. One well, of the that few was the Aaron ruling throws. on the field that came after some conversation. Yeah. They had marked the ball out near the 30-yard line, but that's a good call. Ball rolling around on the ground. You know, they didn't get a real clean picture on that. Mechie and, and Devontae Smith were a little close together. Again, new combinations on some of their layer routes without Jalen Waddle. Third down and 13. Jones will dump off to Najee Harris, and he stopped well short of the first down by Jaden Crumbity. Seemed to hurt himself on the tackle. Their nose in that front three, sophomore from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Timeout, 7.05 to go in the third quarter. by participating universities all state will once again make contributions to the university's general scholarship fund thank you all state there's a look from our progressive pylon camera great shots yeah great shots every week apparently we got a little behind there on our sponsor mentions that was kind of a two for one and yet there's more saturday night football presented by capital one as the Pac-12 swings into action, an attractive matchup to start at Stanford and Oregon. Ducks off their Rose Bowl championship last year, number 14 in the nation. Great to have the Pac-12 back. It will be. Got the Big Ten last week, Pac-12 next week. Charlie Scott's punt rolls dead at the MSU 41. So the Pac-12 back with seven games. They'll play each of their division opponents, one crossover game, championship game December 18th. And the teams that are not in the title game still play another game against the team from the opposing division. So let's hope they can get it all in uninterrupted right. with everybody healthy. Scary time to be starting with coronavirus still spiking all over the country and obviously impacting college football in a major way. The big news after the game today at Clemson, Dabo Sweeney announcing that Trevor Lawrence will not play in their battle of undefeated ACC showdown at Notre Dame next Saturday. There's Will Rogers with Dylan Johnson, the running back. Moving along the line, but no flags. And a short pass to Jaden Wally. He was driven back after a gain of one. See, this offense has kind of got built into it man and zone beaters. And when you run against man to man, those underneath crossing routes are, are their money plays because if you get separation, you can catch it and turn up field. They're not nearly as effective against zone. You've got you to gotta work other parts of the field a little bit deeper down into some hook areas against zone defense. But those crossing routes, not a lot of room in there. Five-man rush, and the pass incomplete. Tended for Javante Payton, and they still haven't converted a third down. Now Alabama has, they actually struggled on third down the first few ball games. They've gotten much better the last couple weeks, and then today it's just been outstanding on third down. On defense, yes, yes. they haven't allowed a conversion. MSU is 0 for 9 on third down. After play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 32, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's number 32's first unsportsmanlike foul for the game. Well, a little uncharacteristic for Dylan Moses there, one of the real leaders, signal caller, veteran guy, missed all of last year with an injury. 
Still not maybe quite back to 100% of his form. He's healthy, but maybe not playing to the standard Nick Saban expects of him. We talked to Christian Harris yesterday, sophomore linebacker who was charged with a lot of the defensive signal calling last year. He said it just made life so much easier for him this season. Well, those third down numbers you were talking about, much better the last two weeks against Tennessee and tonight against Mississippi State. And Rodgers, under pressure, threw it away. Quarterback was outside the tackle box. The ball landed beyond the line of scrimmage. Incomplete pass, second down. It's been a friendly quarterback competition between yeah. Rodgers and KJ Costello. KJ's 23. Rodgers just 19, but they've become fast friends. Both have a passion for golf. Played cards together. They spent a lot of time, you know, without spring ball, right. disjointed preseason practice. They spent a lot of time trying to teach some of the nuances of this offense to their teammates. Apparently the uh, learning will need to continue. <laughs> One yard gain there on the run for Johnson. But if you look at Mike Leach's history, yep. it, it takes a couple of years to get it going and then when they get it going they are prolific particularly through the air but if you think well th that offense won't work in the SEC well he was at Kentucky and it worked with he and Hal Mummy when they were in Kentucky in this league putting up big passing numbers it, but it does it's gonna take time he was the offensive coordinator Kentucky under Hal Mummy and they set over 100 school offensive records. Of course, it helped have Tim Couch. Third down and nine. Rodgers, nicely done. First down, then he dives down at the 30-yard line. And this is what I think Rodgers brings to the offense a little differently than K.J. Costello. He's a more mobile guy. He has the ability to extend plays a little bit better, and that was a, a nice conversion on a third and long. Mentioned his dad was a coach. Wyatt was his offensive coordinator and also the offensive coordinator for Gardner Minshew, who was a quarterback who played for Mike Leach, a grad transfer from East Carolina, went out to, to Washington State, of course now with the Jacksonville Jaguars. But he and Will Rogers from the same high school in Brandon, Mississippi. So Clavius Marks. They're still playing hard. He lowered his shoulder like and took on some contact from Dylan Moses. I like the effort that I'm seeing right now out of Mississippi State. Phil Mathis, the injured player for Alabama, defensive lineman. He's had a nice ball game, too. And a lot of that three-man rush being on the nose, he's played well. Well, they check on him. Here's Matt Berry back in the studio. Okay, guys, SEC update. Florida, Missouri just went to the half. Kyle Trash to Kadarius Tony for the touchdown. It's Gators up 20 to 7. That not the story. As both teams were headed to the locker room, there was an all-out brawl at midfield. Players swinging and throwing punches. In fact, a couple of coaches got in the middle of it and actually took punches themselves. We'll update you on if any players or what players got kicked out of the game because of that. Wow. Mathis hobbling off, looking better with each stride as he gets closer to the sideline. Big man, 6'4", 312 pounder. He's had a couple knockdown passes today, deflections has been very active on the inside of this three-man front. Second and two. Marks remains the running back. Goes out into the pass pattern. Rodgers has a man open, and it's incomplete. Malik Heath couldn't finish the catch as he got blasted by Daniel Wright. Malik Heath thinks he made the catch. It's a good throw. It did, it did hang in the air a long time, but does he have the catch? Well, maybe. Well, live, it looked like he didn't finish the catch. 
And they might take another look at this from the replay booth. Undoubtedly, they're taking close looks at these replays. So Matt Austin, my question is, does he have to maintain the catch all the way to the ground if he lands out of bounds, or does he? Progressive pylon cam gives us a good vantage point. Looks like a catch there with one foot down, uh, sure. which is all he needs. I then think that's this a is catch. when the ball comes bouncing out. And I think that's why they ruled it an incomplete pass. But Matt, I guess the question is, did he finish the catch? Well, that's what the replay official has to decide. Is this an upright receiver or is this a receiver going to the ground to complete the catch? I agree, it did look like he was upright. He had two hands, firmly controlled the ball, then was hit, not got knocked out of bounds. Uh, I would not be surprised if they overturned this to a catch. But is it indisputable? That's always the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was ruled incomplete. Malik Heath is, is one guy that Mike Leach mentioned to us saying that he's we think he's about to emerge. We're hoping he will emerge. Had a nice touchdown catch from Will Rogers late in that Texas A&M game. Caught one on the sideline, turned it upfield for a 32-yard touchdown. They had five catches against A&M. That was their last game two weeks ago, a 28-14 loss. They scored 44 in that stunning win against LSU. Of course, at the time, nobody realized how bad the LSU defense right. was. But that is still stunning given how much the Mississippi State offense has struggled since then. Only 14 points in a loss to Arkansas, only two in a loss at Kentucky, and then 14 in their last game, the 28-14 loss in Starkville to Texas A&M. Yeah. And really, the, the, the last two games before this, their defense outscored their offense because there was a pick six against A&M and a safety in the Kentucky game. And you can see over the last couple weeks, it's just been really tough. And again, LSU played all man-to-man -man, because that's their MO, and they rushed four or more. And ever since that game, the next team they played was Arkansas, and Barry Odom, the defensive coordinator at Arkansas, they went to a three-man rush, dropped eight, and then Kentucky did the same thing, and then A&M did the same thing. And when Nick Saban does the same thing at Alabama, you know that it's uh, it <laughs> works. After video review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. Mm. Third down. Well, confirmed means they really believe it was right and not just stand. So I thought it was a catch. Malik, he thought it was a catch. Instead, it's a third down and, and manageable for Mississippi State. And I got to believe this is four down territory for him as well. Matt Austin, any final thoughts before we move along? Well, I, I understand why they made the decision. Uh, they called it incomplete. Stands confirms that really doesn't make any difference nowadays. So, but not enough to overturn the call on the field. Not conclusive enough, apparently. So, third down and two. We'll find out if it is four down territory because Jaquavius Marks didn't appear to get there. Mike Lee's really still learning this new team, but he. Uh, he knows Joquavius Marks enough to call him by his nickname, Woody. <laughs> it's a little easier, yeah. Toy Story growing up. They're going to leave the offense out there and see if they can convert on fourth down and one. Three and a half to go third quarter. Neither team has scored here in the second half. It's still 27-0 Alabama. Marks. Shoved out of bounds, but a nice play. Yep. And a first down inside the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal at the nine. And plays like this are really kind of like runs, like wide runs or sweeps. You get the ball out, he's got a couple blockers, he's in space. Well designed, well executed for the first down. The first third down conversion of the ball game for the Bulldogs. Well, Rodgers was. Recruited by Mike Leach when Mike was still at Washington State. He decided that Rogers to stay in his home state, play for Mississippi State. Joe Moorhead was the head coach. He made that commitment. He throws to the end zone, and it's ripped away. Dylan Moses picked it off and apparently got just out of the end zone. So it's a turnover. He was trying to jam it into Malik Heath. 
And Moses has his first interception of the season, just the second of his career for the senior from Alexandria, Louisiana. I don't think Dylan Moses knew where the ball was. It was caught, and then Dylan Moses just ripped it away. Dylan Moses never knew where the football was, but he just wants this ball. This ball looked like a touchdown. Should have been caught by Osiris Mitchell, and then Dylan Mitchell just... Dylan Marshall just just ripped it away. Dylan Moses. I'm surprised there wasn't Heck a flag a on, on 28. Job, the cornerback. Yeah, for the hit in the back. And we'll have Matt Austin take a look at that. He flattens. He's bumped significantly from behind the intended receiver. They spot the ball at the one. Alabama lines up in the pistol. To get it out of the end zone. They do with Najee Harris. He gets a first down just across the 11. Matt, did you see anything there uh, that might have been a penalty on Job of Alabama? Well, he here's the thing. The ball was bounced. It was tipped up into the air, so anybody can still go catch it. So you, you, it's legal to hit the receiver, so he doesn't have a chance to go get the ball. It's a, it's a little, it's a hard hit, but I think it's legal. Holy I'm a little surprised. Offense, number 85. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. Go ahead, I'm a little surprised replay didn't take a look at the spot of getting the ball out of the end zone because coming out the entire ball has to get all the way across the line. So that's a big difference getting the ball in the one yeah. foot line versus the 20. So the penalty brings the ball back. Now they'll try to throw it out of the end zone and throw it deep. Devontae Smith, another catch. In the air to take it away from Emmanuel Forbes. Well, it's the tenth catch of the night. It's again going against the freshman, Emmanuel Forbes. This is on an island. And Devontae Smith says, you keep coming out on this island, I'm going to make you look like Gilligan. And that's that's what he did again. I mean, that's a, just a great concentration. That's really not bad coverage by Forbes. But concentration, and as Devontae says, some strength to bring that football down. Ten catches for 193 and three touchdowns. Back to Najee Harris. He's out near midfield. It's, it's the big three, right? Najee Harris over 100. You just gave us Devontae Smith's numbers. Mac Jones closing in on 300 yards passing. All kind of paced by that offensive line led by the center, Landon Dickerson. It is a well-balanced, well-oiled offensive machine. And the play calling, Nick Saban talked about complimenting Steve Sarkeesian is so balanced. Short completion there. Harris up to 114 yards rushing. That was a catch for four yards for Najee. Steve Sarkeesian was a candidate for the Mississippi State head coaching job when they dismissed Joe Moorhead at the end of last season before they hired Mike Leach. They had conversations with Steve Sarkeesian. He appreciated their interest. Ryan Robinson rushes. And don't you think Steve Sarkeesian, obviously was a head coach at Washington and USC, is going to get another chance. Yeah, I think he will. You know, obviously he went through some tough personal things and, you know, made some mistakes. He came down here. He came down kind of as an analyst for a while. Uh, I think he's super thankful for Nick Saban for giving him a chance and giving him an opportunity now to be the coordinator. Uh, I, I think he will. I think I think his his image, his reputation, his all of that has been fixed during his time here at Alabama. I think his life is different. I don't think there's ever been a question that he can coach football. Najee Harris carries. It might be the last play of the quarter. Yeah, and you're happy for him. You know, yeah. his personal life, much better off the field. He's happy and healthy. He's always been a good guy. Yep. And he can coach. And he's a people person. He can recruit. They're up to 418 yards of offense through three quarters. You're watching ESPN College Football Primetime presented by PlayStation 5.
watching the SEC on ESPN, Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Nick Saban's 69th birthday. Second rank Crimson Tide in command, leading 27 to nothing. As we go to the fourth quarter, Najee Harris tackled by Nathan Pickering. Well, right now, I'm sure Alabama wants to score some points here in the second half, but they also know the clock is on their side. And with this big offensive line, a chance to kind of impose their will in the fourth quarter on this Mississippi State defense. But they're always set up for that play action deep ball. Jones dumps it off for Najee Harris. Bounces off the tackle attempt of Sean Preston and picks up the first down to the 25-yard line. See, that's the other thing I think that makes him even more valuable. You know, we talked about him running with more physicality this year. We've seen him on blitz pickups a couple times right in the middle against a big 250-pound middle linebacker in Errol Thompson. But his ability to catch the ball, run routes, and come out of the backfield, he's got very soft hands. He has really improved in that area. Five receivers spread the formation. Jones, the pump fake, going for Forrest Gall, and a flag thrown. You wonder if he was being held. He only got one arm up, and you see him favoring that left arm. He came out of the game last week against Tennessee, and they were looking at his shoulder. Yeah, he was banged up coming into the game, and he's favoring Pass it again now. Defense, number seven. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Nick Saban told us there were a few guys that were banged up. It's just kind of that part of the year you saw the interference by Murphy grabbing that left arm. Then he landed on that shoulder, which has been bothering him. Progressive pylon camera with the view. And Nick Saban said, obviously, if doctors say they can't play, they can't play. But if doctors say they can play, he still goes to the injured player yeah. and says, do you think you can play? Because well, they know what their pain threshold is and how effective they can be. Devontae Smith is still playing. And he has just tied Amari Cooper for the all-time lead at Alabama in touchdown receptions. That's his 31st and his fourth tonight. Yeah, just timing. Now watch. This safety, you just got called for the interference. As he moves up to watch the fake, there's a little open window right there between the corner and the other safety that Mac Jones has to fit the ball in. The safety bites on the fake right in that window between the corner and the safety and to the trusted hands of Devontae Smith. Extra point good off the foot of Will Reichard, and it's 34 to nothing. There is a flag, however. How tough is Devontae Smith? Yeah, he, he is tough. You know, he looks kind of like he'd be more frail because he's kind of slender looking, but he is a tough individual. Listed at 6'1", 175. He's so graceful. <laughs> He's so graceful running routes, but All you side. see the toughness Defense. making a catch in Definitely traffic like that. The try is good. Time out. Well, they've had some outstanding receivers here. Nobody's caught more touchdown passes for Alabama now than Devontae Smith. Nine-yard touchdown drive by Alabama it has given the tie to 34 to nothing lead here early in the fourth quarter. Will Reichard will kick off. And it'll be a touchback. Well, it's a Rough night for Mississippi State. It's going to be their fourth straight loss. But we talked a couple times, Todd, about the track record. First year at Texas Tech. One and three. Oh and four at Washington State. And now uh, one and three at Mississippi State on the way to one and four. But it gets better if you follow the history. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's been a proven track record. You know, the one thing, the other thing that's been the worst for him here at Mississippi State has been turnovers. Now they have 17 turnovers on the season through the first five games. That's more than he had in those other places at Washington State, Texas Tech. See, it's 16 there, but they had the one tonight on that last 
Interception by Dylan Moses. Cut down on the turnovers. They're coming at an alarming rate. Rodgers got grazed as he threw. An Aaron pass intended for Jaden Wally. It takes a while. You know, we're fascinated. You see so many of these play callers, and he is his own offensive coordinator. Have these huge play sheets. And his uh, looks like it's on a napkin, but he mentioned <laughs> to us, well, it is folded, and we yes. have stuff written on both sides. But he said one of the reasons why is because he signals in the plays. Right. He doesn't want to have a huge chart. He wants to be able to stick that piece of paper in his pocket, stick his pen in his mouth so he can signal. They don't have a wide variety of plays. So, you know, some coaches have 500 plays on their call sheet. So, you know, if you run a lot of plays in a game, you might get 85 or 90. Why do you need 500? Well, and I think the biggest difference is what he points out is you look at a lot of other coaches, the laminated, the color coded, it, it takes in many categories. You know, whether it's short yardage, second down, third down, red zone, inside the 10 yard line. He just said, I don't I don't have as many categories. I don't worry about as many categories. He just calls the same plays pretty much everywhere and uh, doesn't need as big of a chart. And the feeling he could really just do it off the top of his head without any play sheet. Rodgers throws it up for grabs from Malik Heath. It was well covered by Josh Job. It takes a little while to put your system in. You know, when I was working with John Gruden, he used to make fun of my play sheet. He said it was bigger than Andy Reid's. I think Andy Reid has the biggest one <laughs> yeah. that yeah. I've seen on an NFL coaching staff. I'm just glad you working don't put too. it in front of your face when you talk to me, though. I'm glad that you don't well, do that. All the rest of the game like this. You, know, you, have, you need all the names and numbers, and you write in you know, little biographical tidbits or stats or whatever it is that you need. That's right. Bowman under duress. I wonder if they got a piece of that punt. The tenth punt, five each. We're told that it looked like Tucker Day, the starting punter, might have had a left leg injury. It didn't appear to be serious, but he was getting some attention on that left leg. How they Tahoe put the pressure on the punter. Good looking young people in these pictures. These are the families of some of our outstanding crew members. Not able to be there with their kids for Halloween. Who knew the Pope hung around with Spider Man, apparently? Bryce Young takes over at quarterback for Alabama. There it's a 34 to nothing lead after another outstanding performance by Mac Jones. Gave the ball to Trey Sanders. We got almost 10, tripped up by London Craft. Young, true freshman from Pasadena, California. Played at the powerhouse Modern Day. They won a state title there. He's considered the number one dual threat coming into college football out of high school this year. Many believed it was just a foregone conclusion. He'd be the starting quarterback for Alabama this season. And Sanders tripped up, got enough for the first down. It was interesting talking to Steve Sarkeesian yesterday. He said, and Bryce Young came into camp and was terrific. Right. Yeah. But Mac Jones just wouldn't let him win the job over because he was so outstanding. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, it's good to see how much that's motivated Mac Jones, but he's still being a great teammate. When Bryce Young was warming up, Jones was there the entire time, encouraging him, coaching him up, even gave him a hug before sending him out there. Yeah, I think, as Steve Sarkeesian told us, Mac's been a great mentor already to Bryce Young because what Mac what got Mac to this place where he is is his preparation his work ethic how hard he's grinded and I think Bryce Young with all the talent that he has has been able to observe that in Mac Jones and how much time Mac Jones puts into it mentally and I think that'll help Bryce Young in his development going forward as well and we asked Steve Sarkeesian about Mac Jones. He said the number one trait that I appreciate most, he's the definition of hard work pays off. Yep. And he is handing off that example to Bryce Young. Not much there for Sanders. Let's go back to the studio. All right, Sean, checking in. Ohio State, Penn State first. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, Sean Clifford and Jahan Dotson 
game a one possession game 21 13 Penn State had a field goal just for the half but it didn't take long for Justin Fields to the Buckeyes to answer watch this grab by Chris Olave perfect 28 13 Buckeyes midway through the third young brings it out wide and it's dropped by Brian Robinson and we talked about those young freshman receivers waiting their chance they're on the field now Davon Baker is out there number 11 is Treshawn Holden he's a true freshman there's Baker out of Powder Springs Georgia Nick Saban was raving about him big catch radius yep. When did that become a thing, catch radius? That seems like it's in recent years. Well, it, because wide receivers, there's so many big wide receivers now. Whether you you're talking about like the he NFL has long arms and he can jump, I guess catch radius <laughs> kind of narrows it that. It sounds down. never better. make it a more af arithmetic or mathematical, I think. <laughs> Punt of 32 yards in the timeout. We're back in. Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge in the booth. Molly McGrath and Todd McShea on the field. 11 minutes to go. And Alabama leading 34 to nothing. First and 10, Mississippi State for zone 14. Little Rogers to Joquavius Marks. Stop just shy of the 20. When we compared earlier Mac Jones to what Joe Burrow did for LSU last year. And you made a great point, as you always do, on our group conference call on Tuesday about the larger comparison between this Alabama team and the similarities to the undefeated history making national championship team at LSU last year being hit delivered by DeMarco Hellams on Osiris Mitch who held on for the first down and uh, the numbers those are on the left the full season numbers for LSU <laughs> And yeah. what Alabama had done entering tonight, the points per game identical. They're almost all identical. Yeah, and, and the other part of it is it's not just the numbers which are compelling, but it's the ingredients of the two teams. Now, schematically, offensively, they're different, but the ingredients are similar. Strong offensive line offensively, talented wide receivers, uh, a stud running back, and a quarterback that is playing at a whole different level than he did the year before or maybe than anybody expected and then defensively both teams were teams that at this point in the year were struggling a little bit defensively but got better and by the end of the year last year LSU was playing great defense and I think we can see that Alabama's defense is steadily getting better ever since we saw him against Ole Miss and I guess the other point that I brought up on Tuesday when you talk about Joe Brady who's now with the Carolina Panthers you talk about Steve Sarkeesian two very innovative play callers that kind of fit what they were doing offensively uh, to a tee. Movement before the snap, another big hit delivered by DeMarco Hellams, primarily a special team standout, but saying to the defensive coaches, I'd like a little more time at safety. He has <laughs> laid the lumber on a couple of plays in a row here. Officials talking this over. Uh, the game has sort of come to a yeah. screeching halt. And by sort of, I mean absolutely it has. False start. Offense, number 67. Mm -hmm. Five yard penalty, second down. Yes, yeah, so many ways Alabama resembles that LSU yeah. team from last year. And it's remarkable when you think that that LSU offense did that for the whole season you know we're at the halfway point or a little bit beyond but Alabama is uh, they're impressive and we saw Devontae Smith now Jamar Chase opted out this year right. part of that great group of wide receivers last year at LSU now Todd McShay all year long has had Chase as his number one rated wide receiver with an eye toward the next NFL draft Malachi Moore makes the stop on Marks. It's tough to drop him when he's not playing, right? Well, <laughs> but could you move Smith past him? He's climbing, obviously. And Watt, Waddle's had a great year. Rashad Bateman from Minnesota is, is one of the best receivers in the country, too. I have him at, at number two. But they're, all four of those guys are going to wind up being first-round draft picks. I think Waddle is still a first-round dra draft pick, despite the injury. 
And Nick Saban agrees that the surgery went very well. Of course, teams will want to do their due diligence on the medical side. There's a wide open receiver for one of the very few times tonight. It's Austin Williams out near midfield with a Mississippi State first down. That just opened wide open. And that was Dylan Moses, who was in there at middle linebacker, seemed to get a little confused on his drop, and middle of the field opened wide up. 19-yard gain. Marks. Oh, tried to take the ball away, did Sertan. Here's Matt Berry in the studio. Hi guys, Kellen Mond in Texas A&M, Jalen Wiedemeyer, the touchdown for the Aggies, a 35-17 in the third. And just a reminder, coming up after you guys, Zach Wilson in BYU, late night BYU after dark. Uh, curious, McDonough, where does McShay have Zach Wilson on the board? Well, that's an excellent yeah. question. We expect nothing less from the Arizona State Sun Devil. I tell you, if you have not seen Zach Wilson play, you owe it to yourself to, to tune into that game because BYU he's playing dark. lights out. Becoming a thing. He is fun Williams, to watch. another catch. All right, McShay, what do you got on Zach I've got Wilson? him at four just ahead of Mac Jones, and it's close. They're kind of different players. I think I think Wilson extends plays more. I, I, I think Mac Jones is better in the pocket in terms of feeling and, and processing, but... They, they have moved up as guys that really weren't on, on the board early on and now are, are, we're talking about four or five and po possibly late first round, second round range. Austin Williams yet again. And I know Matt Barry has a very busy day, but I don't think he was paying attention earlier because I think he showed this earlier. <laughs> How about some of the quarterback play though? I mean, Trevor yeah. Lawrence is, is Trevor Lawrence. Justin Fields goes 20 of 21 last, last week. Zach Wilson's completing 78%. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. With 16, 16 touchdowns and just one interception. You know, and Todd, the, the, the interesting thing, and, and those guys have all played great. Trey Lance only got to play one game this year, right. but still highly regarded. But, but with Mac Jones, the, the other thing that's so similar between he and Joe Burrow, and not that he's going to be a first round pick necessarily, or certainly not the number one pick like Joe Burrow was, but. Going into last season, Joe Burrow was what a second-day pick, maybe a fifth-round guy. I had a fifth-round grade on him. Yeah, and and Mac Jones was nowhere to be even thought of exactly. starting this season, right? So both of them just steady climbers and just really fun to watch. Penalty by Charles Cross brought Ball them stuff. backwards, and here's Ball another one. Number 55, five-yard penalty, first down. So one does Greg it Island. still consider a screeching halt if you're going backwards, or, or no, is that movement? So reverse movement is no longer a screeching well, halt. I, I, I'm less concerned with field position than I am the movement of the clock at this point. <laughs> if the clock is running, we're not in a screeching halt. Tick, 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 tick <laughs> as our friend Chris Berman might say. So Mac Jones you have as a second day pick, which was that, second or third round? Exactly. Out of nowhere. And rising. And rising, for sure. Mississippi State. All right. First charge time out of the half. We're back to screeching halt mode. But stay tuned. Zach Wilson and the Cougars at night. It's a BYU alum, Mike Leach. Team. I'm Tom Brady. They're leading the NFC South, taking on the New York Giants. One and six. Quavius Marks swung down by Tim Smith. And uh, I think he's hurt, and I think the ball came out also. It did, and they're saying that it's Alabama ball. He was slung down to the ground very hard and may have hit his head on the ground. Really on the field is a catch with a recovery by the defense. First down, Alabama. Taken down by Tim Smith, a 320-pound true freshman. His head slammed into the field yeah, there, it really you did. see. Natural grass turf. There 
They lost their starting quarterback, K.J. Costello, with an apparent concussion in the first half. Of course, Marks has taken over the lead running back role without Kylan Hill, who's unavailable for the second straight week and perhaps has opted out. With the cap. You know, quietly, Texas A&M, after losing to this Alabama team, playing pretty good football right really now. Really are. I mean, they're, Sneaky you know, top 10 team. Yeah, Kellen Mond playing very well, playing like Jimbo Fisher expected his senior quarterback to play. Take a look at Marks leaving the field with assistance. Good to see him up and walking. He yeah. hit his head very hard into the ground. They are also reviewing to see if it was a catch. It was ruled a catch and a fumble recovered by Alabama. And as we bring in Matt Austin, my question would be, uh, did he clearly have possession of that? You know, I don't think he did. He turns, you can see him fumbling around with the ball with his fingers, and the defender grabbed a hold of him and tried to pull the ball away. I don't think he ever secured the ball. After video review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Alabama. <laughs> Verdict from Mickey Haddock. I think Matt thinks a couple of his decisions have been a little fishy tonight. <laughs> Trick or treat. I'm sorry. Oh, I got it. Uh, Haddock. Fishy. Yeah. Is yeah. 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 your costume now as a comedian? Is yeah, that what you dressed up now? Give myself the hook. No, again, no <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> Uh, what's what's beyond screeching halt? <laughs> Ball start, offense number 60, five yard penalty. Or some down. sort of time capsule to the past. Oh, and, and you know, teaching moments for Nick Saban, not mellowing out at all here at age 69, celebrating his birthday. All the years in football, it's hard to believe that uh, this is just the second game as a head coach on his birthday. I think, you know, like one out of every seven times, right? We couldn't yeah. have cared less. Well, it's 34 to zero. And it might be more than that. Sanders knocked out of bounds. Took a photographer down on his way across the boundary. That's our guy. Saddam Garcia, one of our outstanding cameramen. Is this the view from Saddam's camera? Yes, it is. Whoops, he knew it was coming. Yeah. He's an athlete. We hope he's okay and a real pro. Well, Trey Sanders right showed a little scoot on that play yes, getting did. around the corner. A little different style than Robinson and Harris. There he goes again. Sanders. Sanders. Well, they do have another streak on the line here. They've scored at least 35 <laughs> points in 18 straight games which is the uh, all-time record in major college football. They're trying to make that 19 games in a row. They'll need, obviously, at least one point. They can't get one point. Can you get one point, Canada? You got a, a rouge or one of those things? I don't know. No, I don't know. Saddam's all right. We have no doubt that Saddam would be all right. Here we go, Todd. <laughs> now, what does that mean? Can we, can we let America in on the joke? <laughs> Maybe we can't. There's a touchdown for Trey Sanders, and that streak gets extended, and then they do the funky thing with the lights here that they like to do. Well, Trey Sanders well, has his first career touchdown. I want you to watch a couple backup offensive linemen. Watch the right guard and the right tackle. They are going to block their guys all the way, try to get them out of the end zone. Pierce quick. <laughs> They're out of the screen. Sanders is across the goal line, and those two guys are Ruling still blocking down the field. Video review. Oh boy. At a certain point, uh... that's Kendall Randolph. Remember, we said Kendall Randolph wore number 85 or 60. He's in a guard right now. Here's the question. Yeah, was the knee, knee down, down yep. before the ball crossed the plane? I think it was. Yep. So hold the phone on Trey Sanders' first career touchdown. Redshirt freshman, Port St. Joe, Florida. 
And to add to the screeching haltedness, the referee's headset to go talk to the replay people is about 90 yards from the, the goal line where the action is. So uh, Jason Autry's going to get some more wind sprints in. Along with the center judge, Jason MacArthur. Thankfully, this was brisk. After video review, the runner was down with the ball a half yard short of the goal line. Second down. And back in Charlotte, Matt Austin says, I'm Matt Austin. I approve this message. And we approve because the clock is going to start to run. Well, again. I just hate to deprive the, you know, the Cougars at night. I'm talking about the BYU football game, Todd. Second and goal. Give it to Sanders again. And they do, and he still can't get that wow. elusive first career touchdown. Don't you, you, you love to see this now. This is all the starting defensive players in for Mississippi State, right? You got backups in for Alabama. They're trying to score. Errol Thompson there, the leading tackler, kind of leading the way. You got Kobe Jones. They're all in there playing for pride right now. I'll say this, they, they've played hard tonight. They have. They've They're just outmatched. Hard. Yep. Back of offensive linemen in there for Alabama, including the true freshman, Javion Cohen right there, number 57. You know, and as Zach Arnett told us, I mean, this Alabama offense has a little bit of everything to it. They want Sanders to get that touchdown, and he won't. Taken down for a two-yard loss. Love to see this by that guy's defense right now. Playing with great effort, not worrying about what the scoreboard says, Playing to put the right stuff on film because when they when they look at the film of this tomorrow or Monday whenever they do and they see effort that's a good thing and Zach Garnett in his first year coaching for Mike Leach after a long time with Rocky Long he said they're a lot alike in that they demand effort all the time you yeah. don't play they practice very physically they're going for the touchdown here on fourth and goal Garnett brings pressure. Ooh, the ball comes sliding out of the hand of Bryce Young. And it's brought back by Tyrus Wheat. I think the arm was coming forward. He was trying to tuck it away. There's a flag down on the return. So now they don't get to that 35-point mark. However, comma, laundry to sort out. Yeah. I I'm, I'm looking at this. It looks like he wanted to throw, and then one of his own guys, Billingsley, kind of got in the throwing lane, and he wasn't able to pull the arm back, and the ball just came out. But I thought the arm was coming forward when the ball came out. Take a look at it again. He wants to throw the quick slant, and right as he gets ready to throw it, Billingsley wasn't is looking. kind of in his way. Really the there was a, or was he trying to throw it to defense. Billingsley, and he Steering realized that Billingsley had his back turn? Blindside box. Return team number 40. The penalty's half the distance from the spot of the foul. First down, Mississippi State. Now, regardless, it would have been Mississippi State's football, whether it's a turnover or a turnover on downs. Right. Something to build on there. Goal line stand. Yes. Zach Arnett told us they start practice every day with that old bow in the ring yep. deal with the you know, basic two guys going head to head. Toughness drill. Yeah. yeah toughness drill. And, and you know what? You think air raid, you wouldn't right. think of that, right? Exactly. That, I think that's one of the most common misconceptions about Mike Leach is that, you know, he wouldn't be a guy that stresses toughness and physicality and is a disciplinarian. He's, he's, he's much more of an old soul, old school football coach then his pass offense might lead you to believe. Well, we can say this conclusively. They miss Kylan Hill. He's a playmaker, and they have a noticeable lack of playmakers on this offense without him. Lee Witherspoon, the catch and run. Here's Matt. Sean, good news. Cougars after dark is on the way. ESPN News, we've kicked. We're going to move them over after Alabama, if and when it goes final on ESPN. <laughs> if and when. Is there a possibility <laughs> this won't end eventually? It definitely will. <laughs> the 
Rodgers, risky throw, picked up by Patrick Sertan, and they will cross the 35-point threshold with a defensive score. The third defensive touchdown of the season for Alabama, and the first interception of the year, fourth of his career for the junior from Plantation, Florida. Patrick Sertan, one of the best. You'd think he would have more interceptions, but they hardly ever throw in right. his direction. They go away from him. And if Rodgers had this one back, he would have tried to put this on the outside arm of his receiver because Sertan was on the inside. But what a beautiful break on the football by number two, Patrick Sertan. The only returning starter, the most experienced guy in this secondary, a secondary that I think is showing rapid improvement over the last three weeks. But he is uh, the leader of that, the back end of this Alabama defense. So the defense scores. The 78 non-offensive touchdown in 14 years under Nick Saban at Alabama. But the headliner of the night, the man who scored the first four touchdowns of this game, Devontae Smith. Last year against Ole Miss, he had five touchdowns in that game. He's become the first player in SEC history. Think about the history of this conference with multiple games of four receiving touchdowns or more in his career. Congratulations to Devontae Smith. Well, he does a great job of being on the same page with his quarterback, reading the corner blitz, knowing he's got a safety coming over the top. He runs great routes. He got the out and up, beat the safety, Colin Duncan, and then just the timing routes. The precision of his routes, being on the same page with his quarterback, and then the toughness to make catches knowing he's going to get hit in traffic. We've seen it all tonight from Devontae Smith. Chase Allen kicks off. So Devontae Smith tonight, 11 catches, not a career high. 203 receiving yards, not a personal best. Four touchdowns, not a personal best. None of them are his personal highs. So just a little better than average day at the office for Devontae Smith. Yep, yeah. better than average. Well, and we talked about him needing to step up, you know, from a leadership standpoint, probably Steve Sarkeesian doing some different things with him in the absence of Jalen Waddle, and he did. He delivered tonight, and they needed him to step up, and he did in a big way. Just not a career record-breaking way. Rodgers. Whoa. Josh Job swings down Malik Heath. Interesting. They want the shutout on defense, don't they? I mean, Sertan still out there a moment ago. Job starting corner out there with under two minutes to go ahead, 41-0. Their last shutout was in... 2018 also against Mississippi State 24 to nothing Alabama will have a week off after this and then go to play LSU on the 14th And LSU better uh, find a way to play some defense yeah. or well, They gave up they 48 up points, points today. Yeah, yes, 48 they did. That today. looked like they were making some progress wow. on defense Auburn put it on them today We have 14 guys drafted and then Jamar Chase, the, the first round wide receiver, opts out. It's tough. Yeah. It's the 13th consecutive win for Alabama against Mississippi State one week after they beat Tennessee for the 14th year in a row. Lee Witherspoon stopped near the line of scrimmage. Well, you're right about this Alabama defense. They want the shutout. I mean, uh, th there was a lot of energy on the sideline there on the third and one stop. Nick is still just does not look happy. Still coaching hard. Well, it'll be a happy birthday. They won't celebrate. He was quite direct with us the other day. Said anything that's a kind of a holiday or a celebration during the football season, it doesn't happen. Right. You think, Miss Terry, they'll have a birthday cake for him tonight, won't they? I would Maybe think a so. cupcake. He likes those Miss Debbies, right? That, isn't that his favorite <laughs> little treat? Maybe she's got a couple of those tucked away for him. 
Time for more of a conversation here. Happy birthday, Coach. Yeah. Only other time, you know, Todd McShay thought we went to useless trivia earlier. Do you know, there's like a, almost a, a bonus Affleck trivia Number 40 for the defense lost his helmet during a play. By rule, the clock is eligible for a 10-second subtraction. All in favor? has declined that subtraction. Therefore, the clock will start on the snap. Please reset the game clock to 55 seconds. He's been a college head coach now in his 25th year. Two years in the NFL. The only other time that he coached the game as a head coach on his birthday, 1998, when he was at Michigan State. Oh. And Sparty beat Northwestern 29 to 5. So Nick Saban will go to 2 0 as a head coach on his birthday. It'll be their 95th straight win against an unranked opponent. And I think they have a chance to make it 13 seasons in a row, being number one in the country at least yeah. one week. Well, Nick Saban's upset because they were offsides on that play. He's mad at his freshman nose tackle, Tim Smith. You know what? Put that Offside. mask on, Coach. Defense, number 50, five-yard penalty results in a first down. SEC's been cracking down on the masks, as they should be. You know, we always talk when we do Alabama about the, the stats, and there's so many that prove how consistently dominant, consistently good they've been. I think the one that stands out to me, if I could get it in here before the last oh, I think 50 seconds. But since 2014, the first Please year of the college the football playoff. Seconds. Please stop talking. Ever since they started to call a football playoff, Alabama has only lost one game in that whole time by 13 points or more. And that was a national championship loss to Clemson on January 7, 2019. They lost that game 44-16. Uh, to 16. But that's the only game by more than 13 points. In that same time span, Clemson has lost three games by more than 13. Ohio State has lost five games by more than that. And Oklahoma has lost four games. Other teams that have been in the playoffs. I mean, the, just the, when they do get beat, they don't have those clunker games. You know, they don't have those no. games where they you don't scratch get beat your. Very often. No, they don't get beat very often. When they do, it's always close. They had two losses last year, 11 2. It was like a catastrophe. Right. It was a pathetic season. They were all embarrassed by it. 15 through 18, only one loss in each of those seasons. That game you mentioned, the loss to Clemson in the national championship game after the 2018 season, early January of 2019, was the last time they didn't score 35 points. Brandon Tarnage breaks up the play. He's a redshirt freshman from Oxford, Mississippi. It'll be interesting. You know, Alabama was a distant number two behind Clemson. Yeah, I guess I didn't even pay attention to the, the, the point, you know, or the, the number of votes. I just, based on what I saw today, I just, I just think that it, I, I could see it happening. Right. And, and I think I the argument for Clemson being number one relative to Alabama, of course, we didn't see Ohio State until last week, and they're in the conversation, too. The Clemson defense was clearly better at the start of this year than Alabama. Correct, correct. That is no longer the case. Clemson rallied from 28-10 down, biggest home comeback in school history, to beat Boston College. Jeff Hadley doing a great job with the Eagles. They're rapidly improving. Ohio State's leading. In Happy Valley, Notre Dame won comfortably, setting up the head-to-head -head game next week in South Bend with Clemson. And Georgia won a defensive battle at Kentucky. And Malachi Moore is the injured player for Alabama. I think you could make a case. It's good to see him getting up now. Yeah. I think you make a, you know, it's a compelling case yeah. for either one of them. Clemson or Alabama, or perhaps Ohio State. And it, it looks and to me similar to other years. I'm sorry, Todd, yeah. but where there's three, like last year. You know, it was pretty clear there yeah. were three, and then Oklahoma got the fourth spot. Might be that way again yeah. this year. I, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think the game in South Bend next week is going to be really interesting to watch. I mean, I know Lawrence can't play. Uh, DJ, the freshman, showed that he's a very talented guy that's going to go in there. Uh, we'll see if Clemson gets some of those guys back defensively that were hurt today. 
But Notre Dame, I mean, that's a, that's a chance for them to make a statement about being a playoff contender as well. Certainly and they're good they enough almost, to do it. I, do, I agree. I think they are. I think with, with or without Trevor Lawrence, they're good enough to do it. And Uncle Lele proved that he's ready yes. for the spotlight. I mean, all that pressure with your team down 28 to 10. Yep. You throw for 342. Quarterback everybody in the country wanted. Yeah, if he had any jitters, they, they came out today. So he shouldn't have them next week. Ronald Williams Jr. missed time at the beginning there with a broken arm. Delivers a big hit on Lee Witherspoon. Another streak that ended tonight. Najee Harris is consecutive games with a rushing touchdown. That'll end at 12, but he did rush for 119. And he had a career high six receptions for the second week in a row. Matt Jones is four touchdown passes. Matches his career high. He's done that four times now. Ten career starts. Long throw. And Cyrus Mitchell couldn't run under. I will say this. Will Rogers, he might have to be the quarterback if you wonder if KJ Costello is going to be back anytime soon. Uh, he looked like the more effective quarterback of the two. I mean, the stats bear that, but he just looked more comfortable yeah, and they had a I agree. little bit of spark with him. I think so. I, you know, and, and right now, and I know Mike Leach was very loyal to KJ Costello because he got him to come from California, from Stanford as a grad transfer, help him launch the air raid offense in the SEC. But I do think this guy gives him a little better spark. And I think he's just his mobility, if nothing else. No, and you mentioned guys are still in. Oh, yeah. Witherspoon gets belted. Brian Branch still out there playing. And that's it. Nick Saban victorious on his 69th birthday, and the struggles continue for Mike Leach. And the Bulldogs, their remarkable debut at LSU. They haven't resembled anything close to that team since. They go to one and four. For the two Todds and Molly, Sean McDonough sings so long from Tuscaloosa. Let's send you to Provo now for Western Kentucky and BYU. Here's Beth Mowens.